Greetings, this is lab number two. In lab number one, we have utilized component laws and topology laws, and we came to some conclusions about the properties of series and parallel connections. In lab number two, though, the circuit is going to be a bit more complex. It's not going to be pure all resist, uh, series, all parallel. It's going to be a combination of both, and perhaps none of them. So uh, basically, the idea is how to solve the system. When we say solving a system, we are asking you to find the voltages of components and the currents of the components. Uh, we need you to find all the unknowns relating to this system. Now, lab number two is the conclusion of chapter number three, where we have discussed nodal and mesh techniques. Suppose that we are a bit behind and you are going to read the material or look at this tutorial, brief tutorial, to see how everything works. Here is my circuit in lab number three. I have R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and as you can see, they are going to have some variables assigned. So this one, for example, is going to be VR1, VR3, VR4, and so on. My intention is to stop uh, marking on the R1 because I want to talk about component voltage versus node voltage. Every component has two nodes. This one, in this case, two nodes. Of course, we have components later on where we are going to have more than two nodes, uh, such as transistors and so on. And that's not the topic of this class. The topic of this class is about resistors, fixed resistors. It has two nodes. I want to represent this voltage versus the voltage of the nodes. But in order to do that, I need to define what the voltage of a node is. In order to do that part, I need to have a reference node. Suppose for the sake of an example, the reference node is either this one, this one, that one, this one, or this one. I'm going to just simply assume the reference node is one of those nodes I just noted, and I'm going to call this reference node. Reference node is assumed to have zero voltage. That's the convention we are going to go about. Now, this resistor has two nodes on that. So this is going to be node A on the left-hand side and node B on the right-hand side. This is node A, this is node B. I want to relate VR1 versus VA, VB. When I say VA, VB, I mean VA in reference to reference node, VB in respect to reference node. This is, uh, there is a simple explanation for this. If you want to measure my height, my height, you pick up a, a measuring meter and you put in uh, the measuring meter under my feet and then you take the measuring meter up to my head and then you have my height. That's component voltage. That's my voltage. It's all about me. That's the voltage that represents my, basically, a specification. But at the same time, I can have a different type of a measuring done. For example, you have ground as the, uh, basically, floor of this lab. And if I go on top of this, for example, If I go on top of this, I'm above the ground. And how do you measure the height, my height? If you know where my feet is in respect to the floor, which is the height of the chair, of course. And if you know the height of the top of my head versus the floor, if you subtract that, you would be able to get my height. Now, when I say my, the top of my head versus the floor, I'm referencing that height with the floor. I'm referencing my feet to the floor. I have a reference point, and that reference point is going to be the floor itself. If I know this voltage versus the floor, and my feet voltage versus the floor, the subtraction of that is going to be the height. That's going to be the voltage of the component we have been talking about. Now, in this case, I'm going to say, for example, this is going to be V ground, VB ground. So 
of VR1, the height of camera is going to be VA0, VA0, the top of his head to the ground, minus VB0, the basically height of his feet to the ground. Head to the ground, feet to the ground, that would be the height of camera. That's exactly what we mean by translating component voltage to the voltage of the node. Now, when we go in lab number two, the idea is this. First, we would like you to actually have the voltages of the components in uh, by uh, me uh, measured by voltmeter. Voltmeters are all attached in parallel. You get all the voltages and you record them. Second, though, the idea is to find the voltages of the node versus a reference node. The reference node uh, selected for this little lab is actually going to be node B. So this one, let me go by this. This is going to be my reference node. And I need to find the voltages of all the nodes in respect to my reference node. So let me bring in, suppose that you have uh, basically the two wires of the voltmeter. You are going to have the common of the voltmeter on this end, but the red one, which is the, uh, the, the, the red pin of the voltmeter, is going to be the one which is moving around. You put this, that's going to be in respect to the reference node. You put this reflects in respect to the reference node. This respect to the reference node. You don't move the black pin, which is the common. You continue this in respect to the reference node. If you do that, obviously, VR1, uh, just to give you a head up, VR1 is going to be positive, but then VR2, because you're taking this in respect to uh, a reference node, this node voltage would be negative, this node voltage would be negative, this node voltage would be negative, this one is positive, everything else is negative. Just for the shape, for, for this a specific structure, that's going to happen. So I've got the component voltages, and I've got this fix and the node voltages. If I happen to know what is for example, A versus reference, B versus reference, and C versus reference, and V versus reference. And my curiosity would be, I need you to tell me how much VR5 is, for an example. Or the other way around. VR5 is equal to V positive minus V minus. So V positive, this is going to be B, that's going to be VB. And V negative would be VC. Remember, in this experiment, if you see the sign of voltmeter, you can't ignore it anymore. The sign of the voltmeter is very important to us because you need to fix the reference node and everything else is according to that. So in this case, that's what we do. This VR5, you need to make sure that the red pin of the voltmeter, when you measure it, is on this side, the black pin is on this side. If you go by a different way, for example, you go by the other polarity, now you need to be sensitive toward the polarity. This one, if this is plus and this is minus, VR5 is equal to this plus sign minus the minus sign. The plus sign is going to be VC versus the reference node, minus VB versus the reference node. That's the way we relate these two different variables. To measure the currents, it's very easy. You need to make sure that the ammeter at the very end of the day is actually going to be in series. So for example, you cut the line and you put ammeter here. You cut this line and you put ammeter here. And it goes on because you need to find the basically current of each component. You cut the line and you put the ammeter, okay? So that's how the measurement is done. In terms of theory, what are we going to do? In terms of theory, let's see if we can relate the solution of the design to the known voltages. Okay. Okay.
Suppose your reference node is on this side, for the simplicity reason, because I want, to, uh, I want this to be fixed on one end, and therefore I'm going to know what the voltage is going to be on the other end. So this one, I'm going to change the setting a bit, then I'm going to come back and basically have my reference node changed. This is going to be A, B, C, D, I'm going to call this E, okay? If this is my reference node, applying the concept of transfer, uh, transformation we just talked about, E is equal to the plus side minus the minus side. The plus side is going to be VA, the minus side is going to be zero, therefore VA is equal to E. This one is going to be equal to E. So that's one part. I know this voltage, so I don't have to write the KCL law for this. This is a reference node. I never write KCL law for the reference node anyway. So let's go back and write the KCL law for the remaining three nodes. This one, this one, and this one. If you want to play intelligent a step, one thing you can say is that R3 and R4 are in series. You can actually combine it and then have it a, a simpler, simpler design in your scenario. So let's write down the K, KCL law for node E, C, and D. When I want to write this, the nodal for this, I'm assuming it's just an assumption that helps me to write the equations in a safe manner. I'm assuming that this voltage is the biggest voltage in the circuit. If this is the biggest voltage in the circuit, all the currents are actually leaving the node in my map. That's for the sake of writing the equation. VE minus VA divided by R1 plus, this is leaving and that's why it is noted as positive, VE minus VD divided by R3. I'm assuming this current is leaving the node, and that's why it is positive. And then it's going to be VE minus VC divided by R2 as equal to zero. If you take a look at this node, you have three components attached to it, and therefore when you write the KCL law, you need to give me three terms. If this is going through a resistor, Obviously, I'm going to always assume the current is leaving the node, but if there is a current force coming to the node and it's forcing itself to the node, there is really nothing I can do. And therefore, I have to count that. If that current source is entering the node, it's negative. It is leaving the node, it's positive. So I need to be careful about how to write my equation. This one is going to be on node E. Let's go and write the nodal equation for node D. When I take a look at node D, I see two components. I see R3 and R4. And, and therefore, when I write my nodal equation for node D, I expect to see two terms. I'm going to assume this, car, this voltage is the biggest voltage of the entire design. It's simply for writing the equation, but that may not be true who, when or would I know which one is more, which one is less? After I solve this system, I'm going to see which one is positive, which one is negative, which one is higher, which one is lower. But in this case, um, for the writing of the equation, I'm going to say VD is biggest than VE and VC and also. I'm going to assume the current is leaving the node. This current is leaving this node, so it's going to be VD minus VC divided by R4 as equal to zero. I have two components, I have two terms, that's the nodal equation for node D. The last node is this one. I can see one, two, three components attached to this node. So I need to have three terms in my nodal equation for node C. 
I'm going to assume this is the biggest voltage of the entire design, and I'm going to assume everything is actually leaving that node, except if it is forced upon it by a current source. So in this case, Vc minus Vb divided by R5, Vc minus Vd divided by R4, Vc minus Ve divided by R2 as equal to zero. All the time these currents are leaving except if it is forced on the node by a current source. How many equations do I have? One, two, three. How many unknowns do I have? One, two, three. If I find these three node voltages, do I know everything about the circuit? Of course. If I know this, and if I know this, its difference is going to be plus minus of R2. That's the voltage of the component R2. And as soon as I know what the voltage of R2 is, the current of R2, I would know immediately. When I look at it this way, for example, VE minus VA divided by R1, plus minus the current goes this way. I know the plus minus and the voltage, and I know also the current that goes in. In this case, actually, it's going to be negative because this, this is more than this. When you solve the system, you will know. So it's going to be V A minus V E divided by R1. You don't have to worry about which one is bigger, which one is smaller. You just need to take a look at your polarity, the convention. Write the equation V in this case, V E minus V A is plus minus done if it is negative that's not your fault if the current goes this way because of the ohm law and that current happens to be negative that's not your fault and we are done three equations three unknowns and you solve the system when you solve the system all the voltages and currents are actually coming to light the next part of that would be to actually uh, uh, analyze the system through mesh technique. But here I would like to actually go in and do an implementation and then we'll talk about the mesh equation later.